They are like Shankar Puma, my mom's cousins and all. So can they sponsor me or uh, there is a friend of mine uh, who stays in Canada who has PR and everything. So is there any chances by any way can he sponsor me? Guys, is the test the value of friendship by calling your friend in Canada and asking for a job. I think he will cut your phone immediately. Whether these people who are relatives or friends in Canada, they are close to you or not, if they can help you find a job, it's best. But I've been doing this for past 15 years. I have never seen even a single family, a single so-called friend, offer a friend a job in Hyderabad or India. And that, that breaks the friendship. So if they can help you by getting a job, you get extra points through LMI and job offer, extra 50 or 200 points. But there's no other system of sponsoring through these relatives. A friend cannot sponsor you. A family relative cannot sponsor you. The only people in family who can sponsor you are three people. One is your father and mother. If your father and mother are in Canada as a Canadian citizen or a PR, and if you are less than 22, then you are called a dependent child and then you can be sponsored. But that doesn't I don't see anybody less than 22 here. Maybe I don't know somebody, maybe. But so that is the first category of family sponsorship. The second category is your wife or husband, your spouse can sponsor you. So if you are not married, if you are looking for a wife or husband in Canada, make sure you check the Canadian citizenship first. Are you a Canadian citizen? Then you do the marriage. Only then they can sponsor you. The third people who can sponsor you are your children, which I don't think you have children who can sponsor you. So your children has to be more than 18 years of age. They can sponsor their parents. So only these three categories of family sponsorship exist. Any cousin or uncle or no your your real brother cannot sponsor you in canada i don't know who who is saying everywhere your your brother your brother can sponsor your parents and if you are less than 22 then you will come with your parents to them but the sponsorship is for parents not for you directly you understand this now yes so if, if i i'm a canadian citizen and my parents are living in hyderabad I can fill up and unmarried, they will come along with them automatically. Uh, there is one one but, but I don't see the situation here anyway. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, one, uh, one more question. Yeah. Then what would be the work hour? Yeah, 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 sir, can you switch off the phone? We don't want to trust. We have only less than one hour, okay? So we don't do, uh, do the question. Yes, we are. Yeah. So, if I get a study visa and if I am studying over there in a good university or something, you know, uh, basically we hear that you can work over there as a part-time or something like that. Yes. So, what would be the work hours and uh, uh, would it be legal? Like, we hear many things like they are, if you work... Every year close to, from India, close to 55 or 60,000 students from India go to Canada every year. Around that figure. Once a student goes to Canada, and if he is studying full time in a non-English, non-language course, that means he is not going there to learn French or English. He is studying any diploma or degree or something. A student is allowed to work 20 hours a week. What time? Outside the campus. So the university campus is quite big. Sometimes university campuses have a lot of libraries or McDonald's or restaurants other things and if you can find a job you can work any number of hours on the campus if you have time you can work outside the campus so this is campus you go to I don't know some other place in Hyderabad you go and work only 20 hours a week so you can do this while you are a student once you graduate that means the course is over once you get the degree so let us assume that somebody who has done grade 12 here in uh, in India and he goes there to Canada to do a four year bachelor's degree. So after, so I, among all this four years he's working, he's making money, he's putting dollars in his pocket, he's making money in four years. He's studying and he's working, studying and working. If he gets married in between, he can even, I he can take his wife also to Canada along with him 
and the wife will get an open work permit. Somebody was asking question open work permit. So that's one category. So the wife will get an open work permit and wife can work full time while the student is studying. But anyway, after four years when you get the degree, now they they can work anywhere in Canada. And once they're working if you can just measure it out apart from the fast track part for immigration like the investors we uh one of them. Uh, means you, you have to speak out a little bit higher. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Apart from the expression that we were discussing today, what are the different other visa categories for so, immigration, so, like so, investors yeah. visa? Yeah. So express entry is for people who are going on the basis of experience and education. There's second second category called business category. Some people have a lot of money. If you have two, three crores or five crore cash with you somewhere. That is second category. The third is, of course, if you have a job offer directly, you don't have to go to Express Entry. You can go there. So as a software engineer, you can get a job. You can go there and be there on work permit. So on, once you have a work permit, you are working there. You're making money, and then you can qualify later on. Isn't, especially on interest. Especially on interest. Yes. What is that? We have been talking about. Expression of interest for long, express entry. That's a process in the real complete visa of express entry. So expression of interest is in some number. Well that's uh, when you make a profile that's called that, that's what you buy directly from here or you can get a tourist visa to Canada and then go to Canada and then go and meet those companies. The tourist visa is meant for meeting those companies and getting into you. And once you have a job offer then you can come back, that company will do the paperwork, it will take four to six months. And then you apply for work visa again from here. But tourist visa is a good thing. If you can go and meet those companies, that's, that's wonderful. So the, the same process will be there, like uh, for this interview? It will take uh, for work visa? The process is the same. If the, all process is the same. Whether you apply from Canada or from, from here, the express entry is the same. Except the thing is that you have a job offer now, and that will give you more benefit. I asked about uh, uh, he, he will make more money in Middle East than uh, yeah. It's a good question. You can yeah. answer it. Even if you not here. Okay, we can, I'll, I'll show you how to answer the question. So we have to find out the profession. What profession is this? Getting rejected more than getting 
rejected by the applicants themselves. That's why they will say that, you know, come to us. And, and that's business. So, the, the Canadian government does not discriminate between applications coming directly from you or coming through a lawyer on behalf of you. They have no difference in how they will be assessed. So, I can apply directly. Sure. So, I can just work it out. Uh, because of that, the government profile is being taken. So after uploading all my documents, they just told me that I need to get uh, required documents. America is doing this. They are consultants in Europe doing this. Every, just like you earn a salary, I mean just like you work for to get a salary, right? I think that's true. I'm working. Guys, you are technician, guys. And I'm, this, is, this is a horrible uh, microphone. So you are doing a job and you expect a salary. Will you work without a salary? No. Who will work? Anybody here work without a salary? No. Similarly, anybody who has set up a consultancy, no matter what country they are, whether they are judge, you are a customer. You have to judge whether the consultant is worth your money or not. Number one, Mr. Consultant, do you have license from Canada or not? Got it? So the first question is, you go to any consultant in Hyderabad or India or anywhere. Mr. Consultant, do you have a license for immigration? Yes or no? If, if they have a license, let them show you the license. Good? If, you, if they have a license, they will show you the license. Number two. We have to find out how much experience do they have doing those kind of applications. Some people will say they have done applications, but you need to see them back to them. Do they really have the, the experience of clients' complaints? Google is very good right now to show who has complaints or not. Number four, if I ask the consultant, can they provide me some references? Maybe some other people who have got visas through them. So maybe I can get the feedback through those previous clients. That is how you should be careful on who you are going to. But the consultants, just like you said, a consultant will take your money. They will promise. But eventually, after many months or years, and sometimes they will tell you nothing has happened, and your money is gone. So you have to be careful how you do things. It's, it's not very simple, it's complex. And sometimes by mistake, uh, you know, you provide wrong information and your application gets rejected. And that, then you are back to square one. So it is very essential that you find a consultant or lawyer who meets all these four conditions and then be careful whom you are handing your money to. But eventually the final assessment of the visa is the same. Whether it goes through consultant, goes directly to you, it has no effect. I hope that answers your questions. Yes. So degree is equal to class, that's a master's or something, and then they will tell you the points. Okay. Oh, you have some confusion about? Yeah. No. Okay. So it is valuable for five years. Five years. So they told me that it is valuable for life. Who? When you apply for education credential assessment, you have to let them know that you are you are using the category of PR to do this. Otherwise, they have different categories of you know, assessment. You have to let them know that you are applying for permanent immigration. So let me just open this website and show you. So somebody was asking me about how much money can we make for... I have never seen anything like it. That's a government website? Come on. Oh man, this is embarrassing. If you look at this, is uh, twenty-nine dollars an hour. Uh, that's, yeah. I think go, go for the school. Huh? 
in Gopal Zero Fix Two One. I, I want to give you the the general pages that the website is. So the the place where I live in Canada is Alberta. Here. So this is this is my my province where I live. And starting with 26 to all the way 62, that is for our. So this is software engineer. This is the average range of salary that they, they can expect. So on this website, jobbank.gc.ca, you can you can you know pick any occupation profile and then get a get a tentative idea, you know how much. And the salaries will differ from different. But in some some places in my city uh, here, it, it so in my city, 62.50. So it, depending on the it's a big city or small city, the the salary will differ. But you can get a basic idea on what somebody was telling me some other knock code just now. Yeah, zero six two one. Zero six two one. Yeah. So this is this might be here. this might be very close. Uh, where, where do you want to live in Canada? Uh, you have to pick a region. Alberta. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> well, this is the starting salary. So you see a difference between the starting salaries. Between a retail manager and a software engineer, do you see the difference? Starting with 14 and going 55. Um, that was in software engineer was around 26, 29. So that's, that's, uh, that's the going standard. This is how much money you can make. I mean, if somebody, uh, let's look at uh, $30 in my city where I'm living. So $30 per hour, which is, if you work for 40 hours a week, which is full-time job, you are making about $1,200 a week. So that means you are making approximately around uh, 4800 a month. But this is gross salary. And now the Canadian government wants taxes from, you know, you are, you are paying about $1,200 a month as tax. So you are left with about uh, three, 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 six. Uh, three, three, six. Three, three, six. Three thousand six hundred in money in your a pocket. Yeah. Whereas if you were working in Dubai or somewhere, that all money was in your pocket, 100%. I think this is still not working now. You need to throw this and get <laughs> Made in China, I guess. Um, there, were, there were so many people in Dubai who were not happy they were making a lot of money in Dubai, but they were not happy in Dubai. The reason is because they cannot get the permanent immigration in Dubai, not like a Dubai passport. So all of these people were looking to go to Canada or US just because of the passport. For some reason, we are Indians, but we do not like Indian passport. How many people like Indian passport? You like Indian passport? If I if I give you American passport and, and I say give me your Indian passport, you will do that? First, I want to know what are the benefits. Oh, you want then to know the benefits? <laughs> <laughs> then we will see. But now, it's okay. 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 the Canadian government, uh, the whenever you are in the unemployment state, the government takes care of you. Yes. 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 Yes.
Australia also, I think. These countries will charge you a tax, but they will give you back your money which you are taking in taxes. That's the, that's the beauty of this country. So if you were talking in TCS or some other company in Canada, and forget about 10 years, even if you work working there for one year, after one year, the, the company closes down. That means no job. You sit at home, you watch TV all day, you will get your salary check at home. Can Prime Minister Modi do that? Or no. some, some, other, some other Prime Minister in India do that? No. That is number one reason why people don't want to live in India. Because of the security of the income. I'm not saying that you'll get the total salary. It is okay. If I was making $5,000 a month, like the software engineer, you know, this calculating, how to get more benefits. So you are saying that you get the PR in Canada and then you go to Gulf yes. to work? Yes, exactly. So what will happen to your PR? Will you apply for PR because you wanted to live in Canada? No, oh, already had, I have a PR. Yeah. But, but if, you, if, you, if you leave Canada and live in Gulf, they will cancel your PR after three years. So you, you cannot take advantage of all both at the same time from different countries. If you have the PR because you applied for express entry because you wanted to live in Canada, you are not shopping for PR to keep the PR card in your pocket and then go to live in Dubai. You cannot do that. I hope they will double your staff. And, and, and it is unbelievable. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine you are interviewing for a job in Dubai and you got the job, everything, and now, now the time comes to, to decide the salary. You have two passports, one Indian passport, one Indian passport. By mistake, if you give Indian passport, your salary is half. If you give American passport, Canadian passport, or British passport, your salary goes up. This is this is discrimination, I, I think. But they don't care about your language. They care about the passport that you have. That is the truth for fair or unfair reasons. Questions? Sir, uh, because a lot of people can say that they are students, otherwise they have no interest of studying. Many people want to sneak into Canada in disguise of a student. So they have to judge whether if you have a long gap, maybe, I don't know why, why were you not studying? They have to judge on your bona fides of student. So the best student is somebody who, who has no gap, of course. The longer you have a gap, then the more problem that you will be decided against as a student. Sir, so, 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 uh, okay, how can people say happens to me? Like if I'm ill or something, they won't be anyone to take care of.